All right, welcome back, ladies and gents. I hope you had a fantastic weekend. Now, talking about the weekend, I was doing my usual, well, I have the weekends off, as you know, but I was flicking through a couple of news outlets just to see if there was anything interesting going on. And as you know, I notice patterns all the time, different patterns, and that's how I come up with a lot of the, the videos and the materials is that I notice a pattern and then I investigate it to see what's going on there. Well, I noticed a very small pattern over the weekend, and that was uh, on various interviews. In fact, there was two in particular. Someone was asked, well, how much is this war in Ukraine costing the taxpayer? So there was one UK and the other one was USA. And what I found really unusual was that both people who were asked, they said the same exact response. Now, you remember I've put out videos like this before where it's the same media, yeah, it's different media companies saying the same line over and over again. And I thought that's weird. Why would they not just answer that question and say, well, it's costing, you know, this amount and we're sending these weapons and we're sending humanitarian aid to Ukraine. It's costing this amount. Why would they not say that? Why would they come up with this line? Well, it's not about how much it's costing us, but it's costing Russia X. They both said the exact same thing. So I, I went on to Google. In fact, let's do it right now. Okay, so here we are on Google. I haven't altered anything. We're going to put in my search here. How much is the Ukraine war costing the USA per day? This is just the easiest one to do. Let's do a search for this then. How much is it costing? Daily cost of Ukraine war likely to exceed $20 billion for Russia. Okay, now there's 1.8 million searches here. Ukraine war, Russia shells out 900 million per day. Okay, wh why is it saying that? Russia spending 900 million a day. Okay, this is all very interesting, but how much is it costing the UK or the USA? I mean, I've put in a very specific search term here. So you would think that they would come up with an answer for me. Let's go to page two. Again, where is the answer? And again, whenever I see things like this, it's very unusual. And it tells me that the information is being deliberately suppressed. Why? Why not just say how much it's costing? If the people really support it and, you know, they're, they're flying the Ukraine flags, they're wearing the buttons and what, if they completely support it, why suppress a lot of the information? And it's not just on the cost of it. There's a lot more information that's being suppressed. And in fact, not only is a lot of information and, and even on the talk shows, a lot of things being suppressed, but they keep changing the subject to Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, whatever her name is. That's what they keep talking about. What, what's going on? It's obvious, isn't it? It's a big distraction. All the media right now is trying to distract us away from looking into a lot of these things. And they're trying to distract us with, you know, talk shows and a court case between two people who I have no interest in whatsoever. And it got me thinking, why are they trying to distract us? And what are they trying to distract us from? Now, I believe that we are going to be going into a period of crisis. It, well, we're, I've been talking about this for two years now. We're already in the crisis, but I think the next six months is gonna be a lot more telling and we're going to go into a further period of crisis. So it makes me wonder why they don't want us preparing for these periods of crisis, why they're not talking about food shortages and things like that. Although, let me just show you this article real quick. This was on the BBC, hold on, this one here. I just highlighted this. So this is breaking news, you can see live. Warnings of global food shortages as missiles hit Odessa. And then if you actually start reading the story, you'll, you, you'll see that it's completely inaccurate from what's actually happening. But what they're doing now is they're introducing these headlines and these keywords, global food shortages. Ladies and gents, I told you about this months ago. So has Christian from Ice Age Pharma, if you watch uh, Christian, uh, Adapt 2030, some of these really good channels. So just giving a quick shout out to those two channels there. You know, people are, are covering a lot of this stuff, but yet the media is completely censoring things like the fact that there are going to be global food shortages and they're censoring the fact that a lot of politicians are deliberately trying to take us to a full scale war. Now, why is that? I've covered parts of this before. Some politicians 
are getting either backing, funding, or they've worked for or they're big shareholders in some of these defense manufacturers. Now, I'm not going to go into detail and names and things because history teaches us quite well that the people who speak out about these things, it, it doesn't end well for them. So you do your own research on that. But I do want to show you actually something that came out this week. And this came out from the CEO of Lockheed Martin. You said, um, well, you implied you're, you're basically doing on spec, right? Um, right? You're anticipating that order is going to come through from the U.S. government. But you're a business person. You have to plan ahead. We don't know how long this war is going to last. Uh, CIA says, you know, Vladimir Putin thinks he's got to double down here. So how long are you planning for with this ramp up? We're pl OK, so let's just give this context then. So this is the CEO of Lockheed Martin, huge defense contractor. So now he's being asked about, you know, how long is this going on for? Are you what are you planning for? And now this is what I would expect. I would expect him to say, we actually don't know. We have no idea. It all depends on peace talks. Uh, you know, all of this sort of stuff. This is what I'd expect him to say. But this is what he says. Planning for the long run and not just in the javelin, because this situation, the Ukraine conflict has highlighted a couple of really important things for us. One OK, so he said we're planning for the long run and not just in the javelin. Now, the javelin is very interesting in and of itself. We'll talk about that in a moment. One is that we need to have superior systems in large enough numbers. So like javelin stingers, advanced cruise missiles, uh, equipment like that. So we know there's going to be increased demand for those kinds of systems Throughout from the Europe. U.S. Okay. and for our allies as well and beyond into uh, Asia Pacific, most likely too. OK, and he just said Asia Pacific as well. What's that? China and Taiwan. Does none of this seem a little bit unusual to you? Second really valuable lesson was control of the airspace is really critical. So the Ukrainians are managing to control their airspace. The Russian Air Force doesn't have free reign over the entire country. We know that there's going to be increased demand for those kinds of uh, equipment, too because the threat between Russia and China is just going to increase even after the Ukraine war. Uh, we hope is op over soon. Those no, he doesn't. He doesn't hope it's over soon. He, he's the CEO of a weapons manufacturer. This is the thing that makes me laugh about this sort of stuff. These people are taken seriously with their comments. Obviously, he doesn't hope it's over soon. He hopes this goes on and goes global because they're going to make an absolute fortune from manufacturing weapons. Now, let me go on to this. OK, so this is the Javelin, right? So anyone, any one of you who, like myself, served in the military, you know what a Javelin is. It is this rocket system, very effective, especially against um, tanks, artillery, things like that. Now, how much do you think one of these costs? Well, here's the answer. One hundred and seventy six thousand dollars. Now, how many of the USA sent? They have sent five thousand. So they've they've completely run out of supply themselves. But they sent five thousand of these over to Ukraine. And now the stockpile in the USA uh, is running low. Now, you do the math on that. Five thousand times one hundred and seventy six thousand dollars. That is, I think, eight hundred and eighty million dollars. It's just shy of nine hundred million dollars, which is almost one billion dollars. Just think about that for a moment. One billion dollars. But that's not all. The Pentagon wants to give even more weapons. Um, as expected, defense contractors will continue seeing a windfall of profits. The Pentagon is expanding delivery of commercially available weapons and military equipment to Ukraine detailing on Friday its $136 million in purchases of aerial drones, laser guided rockets, binoculars and other items set for shipment soon. So I just want to bring your attention to what actually you know, happens with these processes. And again, you can look at Iraq and Afghanistan and all these other uh, conflicts. So first they say, oh, what they did was wrong. What Russia did was wrong. Next, they say we're sending humanitarian aid. Then they say, Right, we're sending support. So it would be like body armor and helmets and, and medical stuff for the military. But then they say, oh, oh, no, we're not going to send weapons or anything like that. But then a short while afterwards, they send weapons. So this is the period we're in now. And then what comes next? It's fighter jets and artillery and all the other stuff. And then they say, wow, they'll say the Ukrainians can't use this stuff themselves because they're not trained. So we need to send, you know, um, specialists. So specialist training units. 
And then what happens after that is, okay, we need to send our own military, just a small amount. Then they send the whole, you know, bigger amounts of military. Before you know it, you end up in a war, a third world war. And that is the way this is leading towards. Don't listen to anyone that's saying, no, 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 it's all going to end, you know, give it a couple of weeks, Russia's going to back down and, you know, we're not going to send troops, anything like that. No, this isn't how it works. There is just too much uh, warmongering, there's too much uh, incentives, financial incentives. War is very, very profitable, as we as we know. Absolute fortunes are, are made from, from war. So let's move on to this article then. Dems ditch COVID funds to rush $40 billion to Ukraine. So remember last week it was $33 billion. Now it's $40 billion. Congressional Democrats are rushing forward to whip up $39.8 billion in additional Ukraine aid after agreeing to drop a proposal for additional COVID-19 related funding they plan to combine. Isn't it interesting? COVID just vanished into thin air. It's just gone. No one's even talking about it now. The package, which tops President Joe Biden's $33 billion request in April, could receive a House vote as soon as Tuesday, which is today, with Senate Democrats indicating that they're prepared to move swiftly. So it was April 28th, actually, that Biden asked for that $33 billion to support Ukraine, including more than $20 billion in military assistance. So of that 33, 20 billion was for military. The new proposal includes an additional 3.4 billion for military, so that's even more, and 3.4 billion in humanitarian aid. Well, at least some of it is going to humanitarian aid because what is war good for? Absolutely nothing. It is a complete waste of money and human life. But of course, there's disputes over this money because the USA right now, in my opinion, is imploding. They can't even secure their own borders, yet they want to send all this money to help secure the Ukrainian border. Um, so this is a point, or whether stiffer immigration controls should be included. So this is one of the things that's been argued about. Okay, next point then. How much do drones cost the United States? No one's asking this question. Well, the cost per flight hour, and bear in mind this is three years old uh, data now, costs up to $18,500 per hour. The Department of Defense requested approximately $9.39 billion for drones and associated technologies for the fiscal year 2019 budget. Now, the other thing you might find strange, which I do, and whenever I talk about this, people get really angry and really upset and emotional and say, oh, you don't care about Ukraine when you talk about these things. These are statistics and facts, ladies and gentlemen. So if someone gets upset or emotional over these statistics, that is a reflection of that person, not the statistics themselves. So what these show are 2020, 2021, casualties and war in places like Afghanistan. 31,000 confirmed fatalities in 2020 alone. Ethiopia, this has been going on for a long time. The war has resulted in more than 9,000 documented casualties, though some sources estimate more than 50,000 casualties by September 21. Mexico drug war, 350,000 deaths. Yemen civil war, 140,000 casualties, including nearly 20,000 in 2020 alone. And then we have this category, 1,000 to 10,000 casualties. And again, there's a whole list here. Now, why am I bringing up this list? Why am I bringing your attention to all of these other conflicts? Well, very simply, you've got to start asking the question. And I know people are going to get upset by this and they're going to go crazy in the comments, but you've got to ask the question, why is all of this focus, energy, effort, money, war being focused on what's happening with Russia and Ukraine? but yet no energy or focus was, was on any of these others. Well, Afghanistan, obviously, which was a very fast withdrawal, leaving a lot of equipment, weapons, people. And I guess we know why that withdrawal was so fast now, seeing what we're seeing right now. Obviously, the US government and uh, intelligence officials knew, or at least had a, a good idea that What's, going, what's happening right now in Ukraine was going to happen. And actually, if you remember that video I did on the immigration crisis, where uh, Belarus was apparently, we don't know, but apparently flying in refugees to the Polish border, and I covered all of that. 
I talked then about all of the Russian military and all the equipment on the border. So this was months before, you know, Russia even crossed the border. And I talked about that and said, what's going on here? Why is, you know, all of this build up on the border? Well, firstly, Russia has decided to display a massive show of force on the border. Russia has also deployed nuclear capable bombers to fly near the Polish border. Escorting these Russian planes are Belarusian fighter jets. Belarus says these flights will now be a regular affair. Russian paratroopers are also conducting joint exercises with Belarusian paratroopers along the border. Russia or Belarus could just simply cut off the gas supply. Cut off the gas supply. So I don't think any of this really has come as a surprise to the politicians and the military and the government and everyone. I think they've known about this whole situation for a long, long time. They've had a long time to plan around it all. But, but really the question is, why is all of these resources going towards this war, but none have gone towards protecting the civilians in any of the other conflicts? I've never seen anyone waving a, you know, Somalia flag or, you know, wearing a, a pin with the, the Yemen flag or anything like this. Never seen it, never seen it. I, I'm only seeing it now because it's on, on the mainstream media. So just a few things then for you to ponder on and think about today. A few, uh, hopefully I've raised some important questions here, but as always, I'd love to know what you think of, of what I've talked about today. Uh, please drop a comment below. I always enjoy reading the comments, getting your sort of insight, what you think is going on. And of course, the more that you share and comment, the more that other people can read and sort of learn alternative views. Well, in fact, we want both sides. We don't want to be a Google. We don't want to be, you know, some of these platforms that you type in a search like we did at the beginning and then it comes back with absolutely nothing to do with the, the search. We want this channel to be open. The people who get upset and get angry and they type in caps and then leave or unsub or whatever, that is baffling to me. It's very weird because as a truth seeker, I always want to know both sides. I want to know what's being said in Russia. I want to know what's being said in the West, what propaganda is being put out by either side. I want to know all these things. That is you know, what I think makes us human, makes us uh, truth seekers and what helps us to grow and what helps us not to get manipulated so that we can actually prepare as a community. And I think we're doing a great job uh, truly on this channel. As a community, all of you subscribers, I think we're doing a really good job in preparing for everything that's coming. So I just wanna say, I appreciate you all so much more than you know. Thank you for being a subscriber here. Thanks for watching my videos every day. Really appreciate you. God bless you and your family. And I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.